Playing Rust, it's hard enough being a solo or a small group. Made even more difficult if you have a limited time to play. Rushing on after work on wipe day? It's fairly common to see clans and groups with towers all around you. But you're a chat. You press on anyways. Fighting your way through the lands? You farm. Hitting all the nodes, running some monuments? You finally gathered enough loot to build yourself a small base just before logging off for the night. At work the next day, you plan out your evening of oil rig runs, base expansions, and maybe even a raid or two. On the way home, you get more and more excited, ready to continue your adventures from the night before. But you've been raided. It's back to the beaches with no loot, no base, and no hope. This would not have happened if you had just built the Worker. With a sleek design and small form, most raiders don't even register this base as a target. And if a raider does decide to make this their next goal, we have a few things working for us. First, with no signs of bunkering and an obvious door path with maybe three doors, the choice is obvious. This is going to be a door raid. After going back to their base grabbing their explo, they make quick work of your doors. Only to be greeted by an open concept 1x2, packed with boxes. If you've done things correctly, these boxes are decoy loot. Nothing but gear sets, tools, and some trash that most people who are raiding won't even bother looting. That's because the worker holds some secrets. Secrets that will help you keep your loot, and most importantly, your base. With no more doors or path for a suicide bunker, it's clear to the raider that there is more loot inside this base. However, the cost to explore just to hope to find some loot, with no idea of what you're getting, is far too expensive, and they will most likely leave. This is where you come back, log into your outside bag, and retrieve all your loot. The worker utilizes pixel gaps to secretly and securely hide your loot and TC inside the honeycomb and roof. With extensive testing, I've shown that fire and explosive damage will not go through the gap, meaning that any raider who wants to destroy your TC or get all the loot needs to travel through many walls. Because of this, the full minimum cost to raid this base is 22 rockets. And that's if the raider knew they were going to be blowing into the honeycomb and roof instead of through doors. With it quickly costing more if the raider has already gone through doors and realizes they need to take an ultimate path. Again, the goal with this base is not to be invulnerable, but instead to just be too big of a pain in the ass to raid. Now let's get into the build. In order to make this base work, we need to create a pixel gap. By first placing the square foundation, we then build off five triangles to the right and place another square foundation on the back. Next, we can remove the triangles and place another square foundation off our original foundation. Deleting that, we can go ahead and place the triangles that will be our honeycomb. Once those are all placed, you can go ahead and place your walls, making sure not to connect them to the wall, and instead making sure to connect straight down to the foundations. At the back, we're going to place a half wall and a roof piece, but it will only be temporary as it's going to build a shelf later. Closing that in, we can then upgrade everything to high qual that's in the center. Anything exposed should remain sheet metal for both cost and aesthetics. At this point, you could go ahead and place your doors and you'd have a little safe storage spot that is currently decaying as it doesn't have a TC. So to get that place, we come out here and we're actually going to upgrade this honeycomb and make a temporary room. Once this is closed in, we can go ahead and place our TC and lock it. Make sure you lock the TC and after that, we can go ahead and place a bag if we do need to come in here later to unlock it for a teammate or anything else. Next, we can go ahead and fully seal that in, and our TC is secure. Once that's done, I like to get my boxes placed just to get things going a little smoothly. Making sure to place your boxes flush against the wall, you're going to maximize your storage efficiency and room inside your base. For a 2x1, it's fairly important. Once those are placed, you can then go ahead and place another floor piece, which is going to give us two more boxes of storage space. Once those are done, I like to go ahead and work on the outside storage. These are going to be our hidden storage rooms that raiders will not be able to access. Again, just like on the other side, we're going to close this in and then we're going to place a shelf. 
I like to use a shelf instead of the shelf like I used inside, just because raiders will not be able to see that it's in there if they're running around with a building plan. Once that's placed, you go ahead and place your boxes, and again, these boxes do need to be locked so that a raider would not be able to loot your boxes without blowing the walls up and the boxes. Once that's done, I like to go ahead and place a bag here, just again in case I need to unlock them for any teammates that might join me later in the wipe. Once that's done, you can go ahead and seal this fully, and your loot room is secure. Once that's done, all that's left is to destroy the floor piece and the half wall at the back, and replace those with a regular couple walls, and seal it in. Once you have all your honeycomb sealed, your next goal is to seal the roof. When you're placing these roof pieces, make sure you're placing them connected to the wall and not to another roof piece. It has to be connected to the wall with the original pixel gaps just to ensure that this works properly. Then you can go ahead and seal all this in, upgrading this to sheet metal and the floor pieces to high quality. Once that's all done, you can go ahead and place your next two boxes. These are your last two hidden loot room boxes and make sure to lock them up and it's all good. You can also place a small box here, though I don't recommend it as it is incredibly finicky and difficult to loot and you're probably going to give yourself a headache. Seal that in and upgrade those to sheet metal and the outside is done. All that's left is to decorate the interior and then you're ready to roam. Again, just to help make sure you don't get raided, it is advisable to use a sheet metal outside door rather than armored so that people don't target your walls or foundation instead of going through doors. You always want people to start with the door path just so that they wait to explode if they do decide to take a different route. Next, you can go ahead and place your tier one or tier two, replacing that as you upgrade. I place a locker on the other side, and then we're just filling in the rest of the boxes. While I'm sure you could finesse it and fit a few more boxes, this is kind of where I settled as this is basically as many as I could get without sitting there and fussing over every little detail. Once that's all placed, all that's left is to make sure that all of your pixel gaps work and you're able to access all of your boxes. Now obviously, if you're not familiar with this design, you may want to check that a little sooner, but I do just like to, for peace of mind, make sure that everything's working properly. And that's it! If you enjoy the video and you like the design, make sure to subscribe and like the video. Thank you guys for watching, enjoy your wipe!